All right, guys. Um, my name is Diego Pacheco, and this is another Rust video. And today we're gonna talk about borrow and ownership, which is something that for the beginners is a bit scary, because uh, I don't know any other language that works this way. Um, and Rust is quite unique because Rust doesn't have a standard garbage collector, neither a runtime. So the compiler is very efficient. And in order to compile it to be efficient, that changes a little bit how we think and how we do algorithms. And sometimes simple things like creating variables, passing variables to another variables, uh, calling functions even can be tricky with Rust. Um, so l let me show you with code, okay? So this will be a live session. So basically, I have a script here to create a Rust cargo project. I'm gonna open on my uh, VS code, um, I'm going to remove this clap dependency, which I don't need it, and I'm going to go to the source code. So I just want to make sure that everything is working. So let me add this full screen. So first of all, let's do cargo run and run this program. Okay, nothing printing. That's all good. Okay, so we're going to create a function. Um, I'm feeling creative today. I'm calling um, don't move me, right? And we're gonna call this function here don't move me. Great. So as we have a function, now let's add some code here. So let's create a variable. Let's create a string. So we're gonna call my string, and I'm gonna do string from. I'm gonna say this is Diego Rust string. Great. Now, let's print this string, okay? So we're gonna use a print ln macro, and here, let me here do this, and then I'm gonna pass my string. Okay, so far so good. You can see that compiles, but let's run the program. Okay, so cargo run. So we can see, we can see my string. This is Diego Rest string. Okay, so far so good, right? So now, now come, comes the tricky part. So let's say in another language, right, you could easily do this, right? Create another variable and then assign to that variable, right? And then here we just print x, for instance. But you can say um, in Rust, this is working fine, right? But what happens is I, I want to print my old variable anyway, right, this way. Whoa, it doesn't work. You can see? So, so let me try to compile. You see, borrower or moved value. So it's saying that value borrowed here after move. So you must be kidding, right? No, I'm not kidding. So if I put X here, you can see it works, right? I can run it. The reason it works is my string has the pointer of the string, okay? And then when I s assign it to variable X, X has the pointer. Because I'm trying to access x, it's fine. I have all valid pointers. But if I try to access my string, actually my string was moved. I don't have a pointer for my string anymore because Rust doesn't allow me to have multiple pointers. So in that case, um, I need to go for borrowing rules. I need to borrow the reference, right? So I can do that with the amp operator. And now I'm borrowing the reference. Because I borrowed the reference, now I, I can print my string, or I can print even X if I want. So let's try with X. We can see it's working. Let's try with um, my string, and you can see it's also working. Okay. So let's do something different. So let's let me put an underscore here. So if you create a variable and we're not using, so Rust doesn't complain. So let's create another function, right? Um, so let's call don't move me now. Okay, so let's call our function here. We're gonna call don't move me now. Great. Let's add some code here, okay? So let's say I wanna create a vector because I wanna add some numbers, right? So let's see v, and this will be vec new, right? I have a new vector. Then let's do a, a for loop, and let's say we want to add some values to this vector. So I'm just gonna push it, and then I push i here, so we're gonna have some values, right? Um, I'm missing the in operator here. Okay, so now 
Whoa, it's, it's not working? Seriously? Yeah, guys, it's not working. So we do run, you cannot borrow again. Why? Because here, there, there's another context, right? And there's a couple of ways we can fix this, but the simple way is to say it's mutable, right? Then you can m mute the state, right? And then it works again. So you can see it's compiling. So l let's print these values, okay? So we're gonna print the whole, Rust has a macro, which is quite interesting. So we can print the whole vector at once. We just do this, okay? And now we are able to print the whole vector. Okay, let me put his here to have more space so it can fit all in the screen. Okay, so now if you run this, you can see it's working, right? Zero to nine, it's all great. But now let's say I want to have factor this code and I want to add this into a function, right? Uh, which would make sense. So let's say print me. I'm going to call function print me. Um, let's put the code here, and here we need to receive a vector, right, that will be a vec, and let's say we want i uh, third, could be 64, whatever, 32, all good. So here we have a function, um, let's call the function, okay, and then we just pass here, here, then we're calling the function. So far so good, right? So we can see it compiles and run and we are printing but let's say for some reason I want to print um, before I add the values and later on right so that's why I have a function right I can call it multiple times so let's say I want to print it now and then guys look what happens boom <laughs> it doesn't work yes so if you run here we can see borrow kicking in again right why because in the way Rust thinks is Okay, so, so you have a pointer here, you're calling a function. So this function now owns the pointer. And what you do, you return nothing. So, so you are sucking the reference. So, so now on from here and here, right, um, we lost the reference. So that, that's why you cannot do this code. So the simple way to fix this problem is to return the reference back to the don't move me now function. And we do that by returning values, right? And also, this is a great practice for testing, right? Because if you don't return anything, it will be much harder to test. So we just need to say that we want to return a vec of uh, i64, right? Um, let me fix this. And then we also need to return it because we are not returning. All right, that's not enough yet because we need to get the reference back by doing this, right? And then we can see it compiles and run. So as you can see, it's all working. So here we are printing a vector with no values. Then we we change, we mutate the vector with 10 elements, and then we print it again, and it's all working, all right? And, and this will gonna keep happening over and over again, all right? So you can see again here, it doesn't work. So if I wanna call one more time, I need to get the reference again, then I can print again. So if I run, I can see printed two times, okay? So on the beginning, this could be a bit annoying, but as you guys can see, it's not that hard. It's not that complicated. And uh, that, that's really important because then you can get a very, very safe program with strong performance, right? So that's it, guys. That's, 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 that was the video about borrowing and ownership. I hope you like it and enjoy. So take care. Bye.